A woman named Becky is lounging by the pool at the Fountain Blue Hotel when a strapping pool attendant catches her eye. She asks him if he'd like to go on a date with her, but there's a catch. Her husband wants in on the action, too. Wondery presents In God We Lust, a story of an alluring sex scandal, power, money, and a very public fall from grace. What begins as an unconventional proposition will soon throw them all into the international spotlight. And that's because the couple is none other than Jerry Falwell Jr. and his wife, Becky, two of the most powerful figures in evangelical America. But as their forbidden fling blossomed into a full-fledged relationship, the Falwells did much more than break their own rules. While running Liberty University, a school that strictly enforced abstinence, including a rule against prolonged eye contact with the opposite sex, the Falwells lured John Caro Granda into a love triangle that lasted years. They promised him the world, paying for a new apartment, treating him to lavish vacations, and brokering meetings with the likes of Donald Trump. But when the word of their thruple fell into the wrong hands, it led to a political extortion and international headlines that brought Jerry Falwell Jr.'s empire crash down. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed this. It was riveting. I was up all night. I even forgot that I was eating a pizza in bed. It had me on the edge of my seat. God, the devil, money, sex. It was simply irresistible. Listen to In God We Lust on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or you can listen to new episodes early and ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Within God We Lust, feel the scandal. Wondery, feel the story. Hello, listener. Please, let me ask you. Is there something coming between you and your happiness? Maybe obstacles which prevent you from achieving goal? Oh my God, so bad. But good news, BetterHelp, they're here. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. So convenient that. Now, please, start communicating in under 48 hours this is not crisis line, this is not self-help. This is actual professional counseling and it's done securely online. Send message to your counselor any time of day. What happens? Well, you get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you schedule weekly video or phone sessions. It's amazing. Wow. All of this happens without ever having to sit in uncomfortable waiting room. Uncomfortable waiting room, thing of the past. Now, it's all in your living room. Wow. BetterHelp, committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it free and easy to change counselors if you need that. I love the fact that I can talk to a professional counselor from my own home. I now have to leave and get in my 1987 Yugo and drive to office to just sit in the waiting room. I can turn on tablet and be talking to therapist in minutes. The future, it's now. Wow, this is much more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid. It's so available. Licensed professional counselors, they are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and so much more. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselor in all 50 states. Unbelievable. I want you to start living happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com bold. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bold. Okay, welcome to another lovely episode of The Bald and the Beautiful. We are so pleased and pleasured to have today um, an actual star, megawatt. megawatt. Megawatt superstar. International woman of incredible acclaim. She's success. a model. <laughs> she's an actress. She's an icon. And she's, she is the moment. <laughs> yes, she is. Now, come on now. <laughs> uh, a woman who is absolutely beautiful and not even a little bit bald. Not even a little, well... In well, the special, we learned a little bit about sudden onset female baldness, but we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> Chelsea Handler's here today. Woo! Hi, Chelsea. I am, I am a slightly, I am a little bit bald. And yeah, so I, that's why I wanted to do this podcast. <laughs> thank you. You're being vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, thank you for vulnerability right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who saw Evolution, your newest special, knows a little bit about your uh, surprise onset baldness. A surprise to everyone, including the doctor. Who prescribed you testosterone? <laughs> yeah, the, including the doctor who prescribed me the testosterone that made my hair to start falling out. She was as surprised as I was when I brought it to her attention. <laughs> 
Which makes me feel really good about the provider that I'm talking to. They're like, what's your name again? <laughs> yeah. What are you here for? It's a bit like when you talk to a vet, you know, you don't get a straight answer. You always just get vagaries like, yeah. you know, this, your dog might be sick or your dog might have all of her teeth removed. Yeah. Like, it's like, is that how are they? Yeah, how can they like age a redwood tree, but then you bring a live animal to a to a doctor who is a, a specialty in that animal? They say, "Well, mm, it could be fifty, could be four. But isn't that how they re- they rope you into rescuing dogs? They're like, "He's two years old. He's got a full life." Yeah. Yeah, but still, once you find out, once that's the pr- place where you're rescuing, they can be full of shit. But when you bring it to the doctors, you know, the animal doctor, they should be able to draw some sort of conclusion about how old your dog might be within like a margin of two or two of like years, not, not, you know, decades. Yeah. Yeah. You go to the doctor and you're, you go to the vet and you're like, how old is my dog? They're like, this is a mountain lion. <laughs> yeah. Well, I go to the doctor and he's like, how old do I look today? You ask the how doctor old, yeah. how old do you look? She still has no idea and she doesn't really care. <laughs> I was walking my two dogs in Whistler and they look like little teddy bears, my two dogs. And I was walking them in Whistler without a leash at Whistler, Canada. I was there for a few months over Christmas. I mean, over the winter, this past winter. And this woman was walking down the street and got scared when she saw them. She went, oh my God, they're off leash. And I was like, well, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah, but look at them. Like, what are they going to do? And she goes, you should put them on a leash. People could confuse those with bears. And I'm like, they're both wearing handkerchiefs. <laughs> If anything, they look like nice little hipster people from down the road. <laughs> oh it looks like they're both from Silver Lake. And she was <laughs> They had on little glasses, tattoos. They don't look like bears. Oh my God. You know what, though? I've had, I was just jogging last night. I exercise. Yeah. And I saw a girl with the dog on a leash, and she was, like, barely holding it. And the dog did lunge. And I'm like, Mary, grasp the leash. Yeah. Well, they have cats on leashes, too. Have you seen cats on leashes? I don't like no. that. that I don't like a-, a cat is on a leash. I find that very <laughs> creepy. It's it's a very particular kind of energy, and it's um oh no it's it's a little like it's it's suspicious, but also it's strange and suspicious. But I don't, I don't know. But I'd rather see a person like, on a leash. But it's yeah. also like cats shouldn't be out; they should be in the house and keep them there. You know, cats aren't yeah. caring; dogs are. So keep your cat at home, and they don't need a leash because they never are gonna. They're never supposed to leave. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. or just don't get one. Do yeah. you like cats, yeah. Chelsea? No, oh, right? What do you think? <laughs> I don't fuck with cats whatsoever. And less than cats, I don't fuck with cat people. No, yeah, cat, yeah, they just piss and shit everywhere and then they, they just wait for you to find it and smile at you. It is a very different kind of energy. You're right, though. Cats versus dogs. Like, that cat, like, when someone says I have a cat, it makes me think, like, do I, you know, like, it thinks just twice. When someone yeah. says they have a dog, I'm like, okay, good, home run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, people talk about, like, dogs are, dogs are dirty, dogs are smelly. If you have a cat, your home permanently smells like piss and shit. Yeah, and there's hair everywhere. Everywhere. All over your clothes all the time. And dogs aren't going to the bathroom inside the house in a box. Cats are going inside in a box and then hiding it from you. Yeah, and they're more, they're more dignified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I have to ask, Chelsea, obviously you're a celebrated comedian, but I, I after doing some research, I didn't know you were also a beauty pageant veteran. Oh. Yes, yes. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm from New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey where the pageant game is strong. So it's almost like it's like a southern state in that respect where people take their looks and their hair and their like presentation very seriously, but with bad fashion. So it's like, you know, because obviously no one from New Jersey is like coming out hot. But <laughs> uh, I, yeah, so I was involved in the pageant scene which was so so uh dirty you know behind the scenes and I oh did, yeah i did like three or four and then my parents got taken for like three or four thousand dollars by, by some <laughs> it's a, for some it's a fake racket, right? that was never really going to happen and then after that they're like we're not spending money on this anymore so that was how i got ousted Holy I'm showing shit. Katya this picture Teen of you of from a uh, teen of America in this blue dress. I I'm mean, confused. You said there was no fashion in Jersey because I don't see anything. But pure, I mean, this isn't this is like the height of glamour. Yeah. This maybe you were just supposed to be doing drag pageants because honestly, this is this is drag. Wow. I have done drag pageants too. Perfect. When did you go to your first drag show? No, I haven't done a drag pageant. I don't think I've been to a drag show. Oh, yes, of course I've been to a drag show, but not a pageant. <laughs> no. yeah. The pageants are a whole That's different next thing. next level. I need to, yeah. 
the pageants, the drag pageants are a whole different thing. The drag show is like people are drinking whatever. They kind of yeah. know the words, you know, Uncle Ted is in a wig on a box, whatever. Uh, the pageants is like the parents. I, I would assume that the pa- your, the parents of the New Jersey teens in the 80s take it about as seriously as the adult men in wigs at the pageants. Yeah, even more Everybody so. leaves the pageant believe they were, they were robbed. They, they were should robbed, have won. Yeah. Everyone should have won. Did you have to, was it a racket? I mean, like, what's the entrance fee and all that? There's all these, like, hidden fees. I mean, and then at the end of the day, when you get your prize, the winner gets the prize, it's like you're kind of in the hole. There's really not much of a payoff, is there? Well, no, of course not. But that's what a racket it is. But I don't remember how much it was, but I remember just, like, the absurdity. First, you had, because I there's ones where you need talent, a talent, you know? And then there are ones where you just do, a, like, a bathing suit an evening gown and why, and why they're dressing up teenage girls in evening gowns is a good question probably for woody allen but yeah. so there's like there's a there's a bathing suit an evening gown and then i feel like there was like some sort of business component or, or oh no they ask you a question right you have to All say right. like, what shark tank yeah. what you to save the world or whatever and then the most humiliating part was there was a dance number and I have no rhythm. Like I cannot hold a beat to a song or like coordinated dancing is just like not something I or choreographed. I can follow. So they had me at the front because I was cute and you saw my hair. They had me at the front of the line. And by the end of our rehearsal, I was off the stage in the second group, like behind the thing. Cause they didn't even know what to do with me. I was like, I couldn't follow the steps and they were very fundamental. And so everyone stayed late for me, like the pageant, the pageant uh, judges, everyone was like trying to get me to dance. <laughs> oh my God. And it was humiliating because the more people that watched, the more nervous I got and the more in my head I got. So I couldn't do it. And at the end of it, I was in the last row, you know, one of the last girls so that nobody could see me dance. So that really screwed up. My Which is a life. great way to win, by the yeah, way. Yeah, really. Great strategy to win. Yeah, I'm sure your confidence just kept going well, up. I rocketed night. from there. And then the next note I got back was I came in like in the top 15, right? And you could call and get your feedback the day after. And the next note I got was that I had to lose 15 pounds. Oh, no, no way. That was for me. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, wow. Holy shit. So, but that's Jersey, I guess. I mean, hey, I think, that's you, pageant, I think that's pageant world, not necessarily specific to Jersey. Yeah. When you filmed your special evolution in Jersey, are you like hometown hero, though? Or are they like, oh, we know that whore from down the street? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like everyone, you know, from Jersey kind of knows I'm from Jersey. But I, yeah, like my high school Someone told me when I was campaigning for the governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy, this guy, I was campaigning for him a couple of years ago. And one of these kids at my high school or one, a teacher from my high school said they don't have my name on like the Hall of Fame wall in Livingston, New Jersey, because I openly spoke about abortions or getting abortions. And I was like, what? She's like, oh, yeah, Jason Alexander's name is on there. He went to my high school and like two other you know, moderately famous people. And I was like, uh, I think that's a bit of a hiccup. And they were like, yeah, yeah. They're very like, they don't, they don't advertise that you are from there. And I'm like, oh, interesting. (laughs) Jesus Christ. They're worried the kids are going to turn out like you. Yeah. Rich, famous, gorgeous, successful. Gorgeous (laughs) entrepreneur. They don't have to say, you know, drug doer and, you know, (laughs) naked skier. They could say like entrepreneur. (laughs) Drug doer, abortion getter, (laughs) killing babies since 86. (laughs) Yeah. So in your special, I was watching it and um, I loved it so much. And you were saying that you kind of have a talent of knowing what drug people would like. Yeah. Can you do like a video? Can you do us? Can you do a video consult? You, you do well with drugs, I think. You do well with like even like heavier drugs like Molly or I mean, you're definitely fine with cannabis and you're probably like Molly and a couple of other ex- like ketamine maybe once in a while. And then you, I think, might have a stronger reaction to that type of stuff. Or am I wrong? <laughs> or did I I'm get sure. it? Did no. I get it? Oh, no. Keep going. Keep going. I don't want well, to buy your <laughs> an assessment. <laughs> And that you do you not have a good relationship with cannabis? Is well, it? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, it's I, a little bit game show energy. Do you want to reveal? The, the truth is, I'm pretty straight edge, and yeah. this person I've right been here been around the block and through the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> I got it completely backwards. <laughs> 
Oh, right, right. Yeah. Well, she has the um, she uh, she has the lifelong drug experience that you have, but I had the sort of like only last year and a half cannabis discovery that you had, like it, the gummy discoveries. And she is, I mean, she is a like. Whereas, like, if I would require about, like, a duffel bag, um, just, like, condensed into, a, like, a, a powder and then just blasted up my nose, you know, she is get what is it, like, half a milligram of a gummy and then she's on Saturn. Oh, five, half a five milligram gummy, I'm on Jupiter. Yeah, it, through the I splits. see, I see, I see. Okay, yeah, copy that. Well, then you, and then you have a long way to go in your cannabis discovery, by the way, because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's Great. just... That's so fun that you have like a tolerance like that to play around with. I wish I had a low tolerance because sometimes I have to take like month long breaks to uh, yeah get the yeah get all back together. Can I ask a question to somebody who's a little more drug experienced? I love to do a gummy. It keeps me from drinking. It keeps me in bed early. Whatever. It keeps me interested in Rock of Love. <laughs> but how do I not eat the house down after? I mean, I get so hungry. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's a problem that a lot of people have. Uh, I, I honestly, I, what I do before I take weed or before I take an edible. And if I know, I just say to myself, you are not going to be a fucking pig. Like you, are, <laughs> I, you literally have to set the intention of like, don't go and start grazing out of the refrigerator. Like I usually right after I take my schedule a meal, like an hour after my edible hits or like as soon after so that I'm satiated. And then I just say that to myself before I take it. And it kind of works. You have to say to yourself, don't do that. Maybe I need to like take it and then have like a late dinner so that the dinner is the, the pig out. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. want the meal to be your snack. And yeah, and just like any major drug, even though it's only cannabis, setting an intention before you do it is always helpful because we, we don't, I don't want to do that either. I mean, I spent all of quarantine smoking, walking to my refrigerator. I had to set an alarm on my phone to not touch my refrigerator for three hours. Wow. The you, commitment. You, you could probably rig up the fridge to set off the, the safety alarm. Have yeah. the cops come. That, I need, I need to put one of those ring alarms on the fridge. Yeah. That's like, right. I can come over and install that for you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> when I used to do the circuit parties and we would do GHB, have you ever done that, Chelsea? No, but I've heard a lot about that and I've seen people Please. on it. You know, the gays get turned on the GHB. They, it's always somebody, there's always one person who has an iPhone with a timer and the dropper and the Gatorade and they're yeah. the one dosing people. But the person dosing people is always on drugs. Yeah. It's the most absurd thing. It's not a thing. sober person. It's just yeah. someone else high yeah. going, it's time for your second dose. When I learned what is actually like the, the correct safety protocol for taking that drug, I was like, oh, good. Okay, so a bunch of lab techs at the circuit party are going to be doing this? <laughs> no, it's a bunch of crazy tweaking fags. And they're just, I mean, yeah. it's like little droplet. The dose, it, it has to be so precise. Otherwise, you just pass out and people just trample your body in the dance floor. <laughs> Or in, your, in a bathhouse and people just do sex to your uh, lifeless body. Yeah. It's real. What is the GHP pro uh, protocol? It's, a, I mean, uh, dosage to the milliliter, I think. It's like, a, it's literally like a droplets. drop. Droplets. Dropper two in a cup of Gatorade. And I think it's once an hour. Uh -huh. I don't, yeah, it's, and it's you're not precise. supposed to be combining it, which everyone does. And yeah, uh, fatal if uh, taken with alcohol. So and great that's, for parties. Well, they say that about everything, don't they? We're going to take a break. Watching your little one learn and grow is the best feeling in the world. But finding the right toys to help them grow and learn can be a little bit challenging. <laughs> oh, that's what led me to love every. <laughs> Listen, love every has all the tools I need in order to inspire learning and growth in my child. My child, Rebecca. Rebecca, the toddler, the infant, the child. I gave her all these wonderful gifts from Love Every, and guess what? Her brain is stimulated. That's right. I don't park her in front of the TV set like a heathen mongrel. <laughs> My daughter will learn. Love Every's play kits are designed by experts for your child's developing brain. Each play kit is tailored to your child's exact learning stage, so they have the right toys for the right time. Timing is everything. With new play kits delivered every few months that grow with your child. They come with unique one-of-a-kind activities and play things that are built to endure plenty of play. Our favorite is the wooden block set. 
basic, sure, but it has all the elements I need for Rebecca to become an architect. Just the other day, I saw her making the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the Eiffel Tower, and the George Washington Bridge. She's a genius at 16 months, Rebecca! Take the guesswork out of your child's play. Choose Love Every today and get free shipping when you sign up to receive your play kits at loveevery.com slash bald. That's L-O-V-E-V-E-R-Y dot com slash bald for free shipping. Loveevery.com slash bald. Hi guys, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. I'd love to tell you why. I just hit the reset button on so many different areas in my life. The garage, my personal life, my hair, your what? That's right. I looked in the mirror the other day and I saw a tangled rat's nest of just unhealthy, damaged, cry for healthy hair. That's why I enlisted the help of the Way Detox Shampoo, honey. Way, no way, yes way. Let me tell you about it. Listen, once a week you use the Detox Shampoo from Way and it neutralizes product buildup, oil, dirt, and hard water from your hair and scalp without stripping away moisture. A combination of apple cider vinegar and keratin exfoliates and balances your scalp, plus smooths, frizz, and creates a lustrous shine. (laughs) I am very hard on my hair. As you all know, hello, I basically just, you know, I latch onto an exhaust pipe in a car and then I just get dragged around the block because that's what it looks like. Hello, hello, hello. You know, I was worried. I was really worried. Is this going to is this going to burn my hair off my head? You know, <laughs> am I going to go blind? I had some concerns, I, but I really felt like it, it needed to rest my hair. You know, it needed it needed some detox. Yeah, 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 yeah. It really needed a change. And I got that with the detox shampoo from Way. Way was created by celebrity hairstylist Jen Akin to create the first socially connected hair care brand. Explore their full collection of cruelty, sulfate, and paraben-free hair care body and fragrance products. When you're ready to undo some damage, hit the reset button with the Way Detox Shampoo. Go to T-H-E-O-U-A-I dot com and use code BALD to get 15% off your entire purchase. That's T-H-E-O-U-A-I dot com, code BALD. And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> um, I have to. I was so my I like my eyes got bugged when you started talking about um, the. It was it five meo DMT you took at that Topanga. Um, the, the 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 little de- retreat. Now, do you believe she's an expert because she knows the exact words? I, had you taken off? You had taken off your own clothes. Oh yeah, like, I was. I was immediately like it took about thirty seconds, and I yeah. was drenched in my own sweat. And I have an aversion to heat anyway. Like I like everything cold and moving, yeah. the air circulating. Like as soon as things are hot, I'm out. And so, but I couldn't even sit up, so I couldn't go anywhere. So I'm ripping my clothes off, but my bra is like just immediately soaking wet. Oh but you're, I was in such a state, and I don't lose control like that very often. So I was you know, embarrassed, but not embarrassed enough to stop what, you know, <laughs> I, was like, I, I might pass away right now. Like I have to save myself. Oh my God. This one went on a similar, uh, amethyst journey recently and the drugs didn't work. Yeah, I did. The, I went down to do this ayahuasca ceremony in Mexico and, um, and you know, I, I was there all night long and, um, surrounded by people who are in various states of dazzlingly spectacular unravel you know like from like uh, 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 to full on just like um retching and you know uh purging the whole night and then screaming crying and, and i'm you- and i'm just like i'm one of like a hundred people and i'm just like you know in my sleeping bag just like watching it all unfold i'm like oh uh, yeah you know i did a special for netflix on ayahuasca where i went to peru yeah i saw it and uh, yeah, and that happened to me. I didn't get, I didn't feel anything. It's like called Chelsea does drugs. I didn't feel anything the first night, but the same, but what happened to you is similar. Cause my, my two friends I brought had really, really intense experiences, which kind of pulled me out of my own. You know, I felt somewhat responsible for dragging them down there and forcing them to do an hallucinogen in, you know, the rainforest of Brazil. <laughs> with a shaman who shat his pants twice. So we, oh. we I, then the second night I did it alone. The shaman's like, she's too distracted. We need less camera, fewer cameras. Yeah. And yeah. she's going to do this by herself. And I was like, okay, great. Give me a fucking double dose because yeah. I hadn't prepared for it um, the way you're supposed to. Did you prepare for it? Like, I mean, there's a, there's a pretty like, it's a pretty uh, 
the diet, the, they, the prescriptions can kind of go on and on. It's like, you know, the levels of it, it like the, there's a full aesthetic practice like that. Could, you could do like a week or even two weeks or more before it. Cause you're supposed to do like clean food, no caffeine, all that, right? No caffeine, no salt, so like no meat. Supposed to have no, pork. There's some no things. pork. Yeah. No sex, no masturbation. Right. No, no sex. alcohol, no alcohol. Yeah. So I didn't do yeah. that. But anyway, the second night I did have a good experience. Did you try it again the, after the first time? Uh, no, I went down one night. The half of the group was doing a full second night, and at that point, I was like, "No fucking way!" I couldn't. I because I took three cups of it, and most people just took two. And there was um a, a handful of us that were not like you know tripping the life fantastic. So we were offered a third cup, and that cup just made me um, puke my guts out. And but that's it. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That sometimes happens. You hear people talk about that. That's such a bummer, though. Yeah, it's such a bummer. And they're like, well, just come down again. And I'm like. Yeah, yeah, I know. I love when, when drugs don't work and people keep trying to convince you to use them. <laughs> like, it doesn't work. Like, I have certain friends that can't smoke weed. They'll no. never be able to have an edible. And I just have to accept that. And I'm the biggest <laughs> pitcher that I know. But I'm like, okay. <laughs> you will get here. high. I think that's a great, uh, another Netflix special where you, you invite drug resistant yeah. people into your house and, and force and, them and like panic room the whole place and just wait till they get high <laughs> staring them in the face. What's happening? What's happening? Yeah. I dosed a couple of my girlfriends at my girlfriend's 40th party, a uh, birthday party last year in Cabo. It was like our last, our trip, our last trip before COVID. Mm. And I had a bunch of edibles and I just thought everybody was on the same page and I was handing them out, you know, and like three girls had to like go home and lie in bed for the rest of the night. And I didn't hear about it until like three weeks after the party. They were like, oh God, remember the night Chelsea dosed everyone? I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> and like apparently three people were sick and bad. <gasps> So oh no! Like, From edibles? I'm like, oh my god! Yeah, exactly, an edible. I'm like, then you don't even deserve to be taking one in the first place if you can't <laughs> handle it like that. Because I'm pretty good about dosing people. Like, I know what if you're a beginner, if you're an intermediate, yeah. you know, or if you can handle something. I mean, other than getting you guys completely wrong or you girls completely wrong. I mean, other than that, I've had a hundred percent. <laughs> well, we do have different. We have different energies. Yeah, we have different energies. Different also, the energies. lighting in here is not so great. Um, yeah. Uh, have you ever? What's the What's the worst? Um, I mean, you've said like you're pretty. Like all of your drug experiences have been pretty pleasant, or at least you know interesting. Is there any anyone that's been a total nightmare or a dud? Uh, well, the five DME oh, that yeah. one was really bad because that one I was st stuck in like some you know vagina cabin in like Topanga Canyon. It was just all of it was everything that I didn't want anything. It was at a retreat and there was a you know a, a sound bath in the woods. Everything that I heard, all these terms made my like vagina close up. Like yeah. every yeah. time I heard another thing that I didn't want to do, I was like, "Get me out of here! Get me out of here!" So that was just kind of like the icing on the cake for that weekend because yeah. by the time I was there with her, I'm like, okay. I mean, I did do the drug again after to make sure. You did? Okay, I was going to ask, what was it like then? The same experience. It was really? Because really? <laughs> I know in your special, you said it was kind of, I mean, you kind of wanted, you got the Tower of Terror experience yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah, totally. They say it's an ego killer and that yeah. it's, it's like a death, like you experience death. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you didn't tell me anything about experiencing death. I don't, yeah. that's not what I'm into. I want like good times laughter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I kind of see where you're coming from though. Like just like the caucasity of it, of like, the, the terms come to Topeka Canyon for the sound bath, like the type of people you would, the candle entrepreneurs you might run into there yeah, would be yeah. too much. Yeah. The holistic, you know, the holistic, um, uh, business starters and stuff. I, I had a hard time with like sort of trying to balance the, um, you know, it, the, the cultural tourism of it, especially with the ayahuasca stuff, because that can get a little, like, I don't know. It's a little, a little weird with, um, you know, just these white folks wanting to be like, I want to see what, you know, what a, what a real mystical native experience is like and, you know, do the whole right. thing. And it just has this kind of like, um, well, you're just looking to get robbed and you probably deserve to be. Yeah. And like let them do. coming out to the retreat with like a Navajo blanket from anthropology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or like, like you know, garlic aromatherapy, you know, it's yeah. like, I don't want to hear terms like, you know, pa micro panic attack and, and things like that. <laughs> A micro panic attack. What is a micro panic attack? <laughs> I don't know, but it, yeah. comes with, it comes with a pound of kale. 
<laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> what is your, what is your, are you like, um, what is your diet like of like, uh, as an, you've been in LA for so long, you haven't like sort of drunk the Kool-Aid yet or have you? Oh yeah, no, I fucking do everything. Like, I'm on <laughs> yeah, I have to. Is it se- is it seeds, berries, and leaves? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's basically. No, I do eat, but I I'm like very very strict about my intake and my food and my working out. I mean, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm I've definitely drunk the Kool Aid. Whatever yeah. I can do to be like prettier and younger is always i'm like sure i mean i've had so many treatments i don't know what's fucking working and what's not <laughs> yeah, that, yeah at this point you can't pinpoint what works so you have to be stuck to all of it yeah, and yeah it doesn't as long matter. As they're like this is anti-aging and this and you're like does it cause cancer maybe okay i'll take it <laughs> yeah. that's how i go to those you know those like gifting sweet things and a lot of times there's vitamins and i always take whatever take the vitamins they could be giving me anything. And yeah. then I start taking one of every single one that seems different. And I can't tell if anything's happening, but yeah. I don't, if it's something did happen, I wouldn't know which one to start or continue to take. Yeah. That's why I just got to take them all. 47 vitamins that say B12. I don't know. Yeah. I went to my anti-aging doctor the other day and she was giving me, she was testing all my levels and she's like, oh my God, you're so healthy, da, 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 going on and on. I'm like, yeah, because I'm shooting myself up with all these, sh- you know, these supplements that I don't know what they're doing, but apparently they seem to be doing a good job. And then she went on to say that I had the ovaries of a 25 year old and I have a lot of fertile eggs. And I'm like, how are you measuring that? And she, and I don't know. I didn't listen to what she said because of course. (laughs) Your aura. She's down there with one of those cardboard (laughs) egg things, like one. I wanted to say to her, like, know me less, you know, like for great fertility. It's like, I've been working my entire life to remain childless and alone. So you telling me that I have a is like not anything close to what I want to hear. I thought we were going to wrap things up soon, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. that should be this. that should be the the um you know the the building you know with whatever the University of New Jersey the Chelsea Handler Childless and Alone like ha- <laughs> concert hall. I like that <laughs> University of New Jersey Chelsea Handler concert hall. Yes. <laughs> It'll be the only wing where no nobody under eighteen is allowed. Yeah, it's just for the promotion of the the health of young women who don't, don't want to fuck with kids. Yeah, it's like a, it will be an abortion provider, a drug <laughs> provider, yeah. and then and then a self esteem boost. We'll do positive yeah. affirmations yeah. on you, the way out. You know how they have like the family planning crisis centers that are really Christians convincing you to not get an abortion. Yeah, you could open the opposite. Yeah, like perfectly normal yeah. people. Like excited to have a baby, you could yeah. be like, "Are you sure?" Yes. Yeah. You also have a lot know. of free time. You want to do some drugs? Where <laughs> we convince you to think twice. Right. <laughs> Are you sure? I don't know. You seem young. God, you have so much yeah. life ahead of you. Let's do the abortion and we'll go do, uh, take some ayahuasca. Come on, honey. Because <laughs> at the Christian yeah. clinics, don't they like show you a picture and show you the heartbeat? You yeah. could like, this is how much money a baby will cost. <laughs> yeah, this is what we could be doing over the weekend in college. I need you to yeah. hold a shitty diaper for five minutes. That yeah. dovetails. That dovetails nicely with my podcast, dear Chelsea. We could have an. We could film that since it's advice driven and life yeah. advice. We could film. We could. I could set it up there, and then when people come in for their live action advice. We can just record it and kill two birds with one stone. It's all, you guys are really great collaborators. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, Chelsea, no matter what their problem is, you can circle back to like, but on top of everything, you cannot have kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's have basically you- my message. Also to remain single is a huge victory in life. Like when you can, if you can like really have a good time by yourself and be able to like yeah. go where you want without telling anybody ever, you have no responsibility. Like, People aren't advertising how great that is either. Yeah, that's what, a really good point. Fucking a, and I'm, I think she just gave voice to all of my internal like st- like my struggles. <laughs> it's like people ask me all the time, "Why are you so unreliable? Where? How can we never find you?" And I'm like, "Well, because I'm alone living my life without a child. Dream, without yeah, a child, living your dream. I'm if I want to lie in bed all day and watch TV, nobody can say a fucking word about it to me. If I want to, you know." Go and leave tomorrow for France and for for three weeks. Again, I mean, a couple of people would say something, but I'm not listening, you know? So it's really just like, especially post-pandemic, I've never been more prideful of yeah. my singledom and my childlessness than I am now. Because it's like, haha, I knew something like that was going to happen. And guess who didn't get stuck at home homeschooling for a fucking uh, year? Could Me. you imagine? No. No, no. Hi, it's me, Trixie, and I wanted to talk to you about Keeps. 
okay? Because hair loss is very real. I myself am balladed. I have thought about being balladed. I've been losing hair for an extremely long time, probably since I was like 16. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35. And more than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. Keeps is a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months, and you don't have to leave home. It's low cost, treatments start from just $10 a month. Discreet packaging, proven results, and many five-star reviews. The hardest thing about hair loss, honestly, if you wanna do something about it is, you wanna do something about it now. Keep the hair you have. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash bald to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash bald to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash bald. Hi guys, I want to talk to you about Masterclass. Masterclass is an incredible resource that features hundreds of lessons from world-class masters in their fields. Each class is accessible on your phone, web, or smart TV. They offer classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class masters at the top of their fields. Each class is broken out into individual video lessons, usually around 10 minutes long, and members can explore at their own pace. You can learn tennis from Serena Williams. You can learn acting from Natalie Portman, leadership from Anna Winter. I personally loved having Jodie Foster teach me how to make a shot list. Oh, oh. And my other favorite was David Lynch talking about the creative process. It's absolutely incredible. Every lesson is so beautifully shot. They're so fun to, to watch and rewatch over and over. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And as a bald and beautiful listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash bald. That's masterclass.com slash bald for 15% off masterclass. Learn how to write anything from a book or screenplay to just a letter. Learn how to communicate with your boss or your family. How to make a dinner worthy of a Michelin star or just how to make a really good scrambled egg dish. Whatever you're interested in, there's a masterclass for you. In addition to video lessons, Masterclass classes provide you with downloadable lesson recaps and supplemental materials. For example, cooking classes come with beautiful downloadable guides that are at the level of a high-end cookbook. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every Masterclass, and as a bald and the beautiful listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com bald. That's masterclass.com bald for 15% off Masterclass. By the way, Chelsea, I have to say, you're a youth doctor. I mean, I, you're special. you got to be kidding me to this one. You truly look exactly the same. So yeah. whatever's going on is working. It's crazy oh, for a white person. you girls, you better stop. <laughs> I, have to, I have to ask, um, do, do you do your own makeup, Chelsea, in the specials? It's, it's beautiful. Oh, no, no, I don't. I mean, I do my own makeup now, which is why you can see that the concealer under my eyes is a different, complete color than the rest of my face. Because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. They turned you out in those specials. Your skin looks yeah. gorge. It, yeah, you look great. Wearing white is incredible. Yeah, I like to wear I always feel weird commenting on women's looks, but I am a, a homosexual who wears wigs, so it is the first thing I think about. Well, no, I don't think it's... I think it's okay. I think the only people that are not allowed to comment on women's looks right now are single white men. You know, mm. or not single, straight white men. Yeah, you know, yeah. Those are the men... That, that Those are the group of people that is on probation. <laughs> so I think... <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Between the rest of us is good. <laughs> on the um, the the, the, the was it help me Chelsea? No, um, dear Chelsea, the, dear your Chelsea, brand new dear podcast. Chelsea. Who's what's the uh, craziest a bit of uh, advice you've had you've given out to someone who's asked so far? Uh, we had someone call in who asked about if he was. Uh, he said he was microdosing cocaine at work, and he wanted to. And he's been a very very productive, and a lot of people have been noticing his level of productivity. And he wanted to know, you know, if microdosing cocaine was a thing. So that was pretty stupid because, you know, microdosing <laughs> coke is not a thing. You're just. Oh, totally. That's crazy. However, <laughs> it is crazy. However, that's insane. I, I know a lot of people uh, in this world. Who, I mean, uh, who would have? <laughs> what we, what? That's not <laughs> healthy. Um, Chelsea, wow, Chelsea, Chelsea, without that's... microdosing cocaine, you and I'd be sitting here talking alone. <laughs> no, we wouldn't no. even have this one here today. Uh, 
So I, did he give you were there details about what exactly constitutes a micro dose of cocaine? Because it's really just one letter difference between macro and micro, I'd like to point out. Um, so Is it a often, tiny bump? Yeah, I think somebody already pointed that out to you. So you understand that they're one in the same. <laughs> it's six dozen of one and half of another. Yeah. So what's a micro dose of a bump? Is he just doing the gums thing? <laughs> Very discreet. Yeah. Hold on. A little bit under the tongue. So that was like, you know, we get we get people like that, but then we get people calling in with like serious problems. And when we have serious problems and we know we're out of our wheelhouse, like we can't be giving advice like that. So we bring in like experts or like if it's a legal question, a legal like, you know, a lawyer or or I have like Charlize Theron called in for the first one because it was about parenting and she and I so she gave her kind of, you know, two cents about this kid who was we had a kid whose mom called and said that he was just walking around saying, I want to suck my penis. I want to suck my penis. I want to suck my penis. So we had Charlie's weigh in on that. You know, he's like four. And um, and then we also kind of talked about a relationship, our, like a fight we once had where we had and just, uh, you know, uh, something where we had to like sit down and have like, you know, like a therapy conversation. And if I hadn't been in therapy, I wouldn't have had the tools to even understand how to do that. So a lot of the times, Brandon, my assistant, and I will talk about our personal experiences and weave them through, but we're getting people with serious problems. I just want to be careful about, you know, not giving too much medical advice, but I'm not really a doctor. Oh, oh, come on. Chelsea. You have nothing to worry about. I mean, when you look so good, you might as well be a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have kids. Get your <laughs> hair done. At the very least a nurse. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I want to suck my penis. I want to suck my penis. Yeah. That's me on G. <laughs> yeah, over and yeah. over again. Honey, you're too fat. It's never going to yeah. happen. Yeah. <laughs> my god. Wow. They well, um would you ever would if we can call in um cuz I am very curious about macrodosing cocaine. I think it might work for Why me. don't you we, call in? You, yeah, you call in and just use a voice box so I don't recognize okay. yeah. your voice or so hi, other people don't hi, recognize hi, that it's hi, you. Chelsea. Love your show. I'm so curious to Big know fan. about macrodosing methamphetamine. I heard it would be great for me. I, I like that you're uh, ca- ambitious yet cautious because we, on our show, uh, we talk a lot about issues and people ask their questions. And we are always like, Ugh. do as we, like, not as we do. We're not role models. Yeah. Learn like, from, the mis- from, from our mistakes. If anything, I have a story about where I tried to do what you're about to do and I fucking fell on my face. So, like, don't do what I'm doing. Yeah. Because at a certain point... You can't have a show where you're like, call me. I have all the answers. Have a great day. Well, yeah. yeah. And also some people just need a little boost in the right direction. Like a lot of people are about to make decisions about breaking up with their families or breaking up with their boyfriends or leaving a job. And they've already made up their mind. They just kind of need like, you know, that best friend to say, hey, you've got this. It's okay. Go for it. And so a lot of it is like that. But it's real people with like real world problems. And it's also a good reminder that everybody's always fucking confused about what to do, you know, and we always survey our close group circle of friends. You know how when you get a piece of information, you tell like the three people in your life to make sure what everyone's saying. And then you base your opinion on that a lot. Even I do that. And I'm, you know, so it's nice to have some like to say, okay, I'm just going to go get advice from this person and listen to it when, you know, you just want people to have like, be a little bit more brave in life. Totally. If if Charlize Theron is telling me to stop sucking my own penis at four years old, you better fucking believe I'm going to (laughs) stop. We have a couple. I have to ask you one more, two more things. You have an Ally for Equality Award from the Human Rights Campaign. I have to say, glamorous, hilarious people, women like you. When did you know that the gays were your people? Oh, pretty early. I mean, it doesn't take. All you have to do is meet one gay person. You're like, oh, where's this party? You know. Like, this is way more fun than anything else that's going on. So, you know, you feel like uh, I think everyone can relate to just feeling not like they belong. So it's easy to connect with another person who feels that way, you know, and sense of humor to me is pretty much everything. So most gay people have excellent senses of humor. Yeah. yeah, my my gay friend was actually. I I told him we were interviewing you today, and he uh, said uh, he went to your house once, and you asked him if he was wearing a wig. And I thought that was really fun because he has this beautiful long hair. That yeah. sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Which is a great way to get to know someone. First question, are you wearing a wig? Yeah, he's awesome. Well, if they're not, though, they feel super confident that their hair is so lush, right? So it's a good way to get to the meat of the yeah. mountain. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, all of this, put your fingers through it. Yeah. They are. The, <laughs> that's a 
another home run. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it was like Chelsea trying to get the party started. Are you wearing a wig? No. And then she goes, well, here's one. <laughs> yeah. It's oh blue. Put it on. <laughs> and then we asked everybody this question because we love to hear people's perspective. Who are your beauty icons? Like who are the ones that you're just like, damn. That's a really bad question for me. Um, <laughs> But who do I like love looking? I mean, I remember growing up and being like, you know, in that age where the supermodels had just came like on the scene where it was like Christy Brinkley and yeah. Ellen McPherson, you know, mm -hmm. and all and Cindy Crawford. So, I mean, I don't know if they're my beauty icons. You know who my beauty icon is? Robin Wright. I mean, she's like, that's who I love. Oh, my at. God. Yeah. Like I could look at her face all day. Yeah, she's fucking stunning. Yeah. And she's like 56 or something. I mean, I don't, or maybe 55. I shouldn't say 56. She could be 55. She'll kill me, but she's pretty <laughs> who I look up to. But yeah, I mean, beauty icon. I don't know. I find, you know, sexy fucked up things beautiful now way more than I did when I was younger. So it would be so different. Yeah. Well, you literally are a beauty icon and we love you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it was so nice to meet you. Have a great day. Do you want to let these whores know where they can find your podcast? Oh yeah, Dear Chelsea. It's on all, wherever you find your podcast or you can find it on iHeart Podcast. Yes, and I have to personally recommend Evolution. It was so beautiful. It made me laugh so hard. I cried in the bathtub watching it. It's just, I really, it was wonderful. Everybody should just watch it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so Bye, much, Chelsea. Chelsea. Bye. Bye. Bye.